All right, everybody, welcome back to Storm King's Thunder on Monday night, 7 p.m. Sir Lucian Gaming Channel. We are going live. Let's bring our character sheets in so you guys can see that. We're about to jump back into the Dripping Mines where uh, we had an epic battle in the last episode. If you haven't seen that, the, those got posted today, or you can check out the VODs in Twitch, and we should be live on Twitch now. So let's go ahead and bring our players in. Uh, and let's see. I'm going to also hit start recording, so we're good there. Perfect. Um, did we have anybody volunteer for our last session recap? I'm happy to do it if not. Cool. All right. Um, so in our last session, um, you would have seen the continuation of the giant dwarf facing off with the remaining ogre. Uh, there was a battle in the main um, cavern area where they are looking for the uh, refugees from the town. Uh, once that happened, they chased after some goblins who retreated from that cavern during that battle to seek shelter with uh, other goblins that were in the caves and they had a big battle at the back of the caves uh, where our druid went down a couple of times but was able to make it through uh, using different shape shifting and um, I believe a healing from our bard I think brought him up and they eventually were able to overcome the goblins kind of in a cornered area where they fought uh, as they knew they were going to be slaughtered and then we pick up with our players as they have knocked one of them unconscious and are sitting at the back of the room and we just find out what's going to happen in the rest of these caves which are known as the dripping caves we had a lot of good uh, action a lot of good scary moments of characters going down and coming back up uh, a lot of different uses of abilities and rules as we all played through that session so i definitely encourage you going back and watching that session i think it's one of our best sessions so far um, and I hope that tonight is going to be another good session. Uh, we'll go again for the three hours. At the three hours, I will check in with people to see if they're tired, they need to go, or if a fourth hour is okay for the evening. Um, we will see. I do know that we have, at some point pretty soon, we're close to the holidays. Um, so we may need to check in with people. Maybe I'll do it off the session, but we'll check in with people to see if there's going to be Mondays that people won't be able to make or if because we're on a Monday, that still works out for everybody's as far as their holiday plans and stuff like that. Um, so we'll check in. And, it, you know, if we have to postpone a session or something, we might do that. And I might do something else on a, on a stream night as I'll have nothing to do myself uh, but game. Okay, uh, was there anybody that wanted to do a flashback or campsite story to earn their inspiration for tonight? I already have inspiration. Oh, nice. Didn't Colonel, weren't you going to do something, Colonel? Uh, I think I did one last week. He did do ours last week. Yep. <laughs> uh, Was uh, I going to do something this week? I can oh, volunteer. We don't have to do it. We're good. <laughs> I'll volunteer. All right. I don't have. <laughs> Earn your inspiration through running your character tonight. We, we'll run with it. So we're good. So let me bring the players back onto the map. Uh, let's bring our. I'll switch over to our map overlay, and we'll go ahead and take it from there. Um, we have just come out of initiative order. Uh, the battle in this area has just died down, <clears throat> and you have a knocked unconscious goblin standing up at the top of the area, and we are ready to go. So, I will hand it over to the group. You do have a cowering uh, female also um, there. And uh, she, yeah, we'll just pick up as if she's still cowering, doesn't realize the battle has just ended. She's trying to hide in the corner to stay out of the way of the flying arrows, the swords, the yelling, the goblins uh, 
dying all around, blood everywhere. So we'll pick up right there. What is the party going to do now? I'm going to sit down and rest. I was just about to say suffer exhaustion. All right. So let's, I'm let's, while we're doing that, uh, explain. So in case we have people that, uh, don't know what the barbarians skills are, what does it mean when Greybeard comes out of his rage after he's had a big fight where he's, he's ignored wounds and, and recklessly attacked. And now as the battle has died down, goes into exhaustion. What does that mean mechanically? for us for anybody that's uh, interested in knowing yeah so <laughs> i technically took about 50 points of damage and uh but you only suffer half damage when you're in rage and then um because i'm third level i actually have frenzy and reckless attack and um what happens with the uh, frenzy is while you're raging, you make a single melee attack as your bonus action uh, on each of your turns. When your rage ends, you take one level of exhaustion. And these do stack, though if I go into a rage, I ignore it until the second rage is over, and then I would actually have two levels of exhaustion. I found that out today. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, Arger, no problem. Um, and when you suffer exhaustion, remind us what exhaustion does to you, though. What is it? What is mechanically? What can't oh. you do? Like you have disadvantage on rolls, or yeah. So the first, the first level of exhaustion is uh, a minus on ability checks, um, any ability checks. Um, um, your attacks and whatnot are not affected yet. That's not till two or three level exhaustion. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and there's not a ton of ability checks as much as uh, I know that just from my warlock, I have an ability that allows me to make a an enemy have disadvantage on one of his abilities checks, but there's never that many ability checks that that's been that useful. So it sounds like exhaustion one's not too bad for you. I mean, other than like grappling and athletics. And... Yeah, jumping, running. Yeah. Uh searching probably perception well no that'd be a skill check so i don't even think that's it, no. i think it's just straight ability uh, let's see yeah it does say ability hmm. yeah i think that's okay. stuff off your raw stats you yeah that so there's not a ton a of rest, those. right yeah Te technically no you lose nope. a level of exhaustion nope. only after a long nope. rest and you have to have food and water brutal yeah food and water is easy though well, I mean, it's it's still a good ability because you get to have all that damage that came in on you. So it's it's cool. It's a cool trade-off. So just for those that are watching, uh, a lot of us, some of us are new. Some of us have been playing D&D for a long time. Um, and that's why we just discussed the rules. And that way, anybody that's watching uh, wants to know a little bit about the rules. That's why we kind of go through them. And once again, always, I, I probably never say it enough. And I haven't said it enough before. Thanks for all the watchers that are coming over from Greybeard's Tavern to watch us play. Um, we've had a good response from that. So thanks for that. Okay. Um, so I hear some bandaging of wounds from our druid over in the corner. Um, Greybeard is exhausted. What does it look uh, roleplay wise? What, what what does people see now that they're looking at Greybeard? The the wild look in his eyes just is is gone. They get kind of half droopy. Like he's like he's almost oh. He's usually wound tight, and it just looks like he's just ready to fall asleep. Okay. Um, all right, so what's the rest of the group doing at this point? So I, uh, I, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, I um, <clears throat> I put up my, my bowl across myself like I usually do. And I take out my dagger as I start walking towards the unconscious uh, goblin. And, okay, uh, yep. He's up in the corner near Jarl. There we go. Oh, there he is. And I walk there, and I, um, I, I, I guess I, I take a, I take a knee, <laughs> and, um, and I go to stab him straight in the heart. So before be I see her coming up, 
and I'm going to step. How about a perception check, Jarl? <laughs> oh, I to see if you recognize the look in her eyes. Anybody? <laughs> All right. Murder, Murder hobos. hobos. Here it goes. This is her favorite enemy. Yeah. It's not a hard check. If if it, let's just. What am I rolling? Perception. Yeah, perception. You you kind of see her pop coming up. Okay, 14 makes it. You recognize the look. And I stand be between her and the goblin. And uh, I say... You think, you, you think you've seen me... And before you say that, you think you've seen me angry before and with a lot of uh, dislike, uh, especially when I first met you. But the absolute just, like, malice in my face and my eyes the moment you step in front of me uh, uh, takes you aback a little bit. Proceed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I would say at this point, she's moving up purposely. Um, you're standing next to her when you notice. So it's more of like a you're going to attempt to get in between her and him. And we might need to do something like to see who moves quicker, uh, to actually see who makes that. So how about we do like an oppose check where we just do initiative. And whoever wins the opposed initiative, whichever one of you gets a higher initiative, uh, will get to decide whose action goes before the others. Sure. So just kind of a, a meta thing. So Jaro just watched Greybeard kill the other one. So he's going to be very cautious about letting this one stay alive so he can interrogate him. Yeah, it okay. It so was self-defense. So <laughs> anyone... <laughs> Yeah, anyone coming, you know, in the direction of that goblin, he's gonna, he's gonna step in between. Oh, well, she only rolled a nine. You've got a good chance to beat her. All right, roll initiative. Yeah. All right, you are definitely in front. You are planted in front of her and the goblin. So Ian, you you see him there, and you are either gonna have to. You obviously are going to have to deal with him in some way if you're actually going to try to get to the goblin. He's in your way enough that you can't just stab him. So I say um, there is time for that later. For now, we need the answers, not more blood. Oh, no. I, uh... <clears throat> are you, how, how tall are you, Jarl? Uh... Crap. <laughs> I yes. am... I am 5'11". Holy shit, you're fucking tall. I, uh, I look up, I look up at you, like, straight in the eyes, and I say, No more blood. You tell me about no more blood when you've seen half of your village get murdered by goblins. Then you tell me about not spilling any more blood. Get out of my way, Drow. And he... He looks at you sternly and says, You may have your... Uh, you may quench your bloodlust after we get answers. I want to throw one RP thing in here for you, Drow, to keep in mind. I believe in the Drows that... Uh, the women are the leaders or can be the strongest and the ones that talk down to the men. So you're getting a little bit of feeling from Ian, who's a woman of power in front of you. And there's a little bit of tinge back to your, you know, that, that society you've come back from, um, of just keep that in mind as your RP in that. Unless that's why you left. Well, I was so so. Just so you know, the the backstory of Jarl is that he was taken when he was like, like he was on less than ten years old. So he's he's never been around Drow. Well, he's in the last thirty thirty years. Well, those kinds of yeah. things are still ingrained, even as you're a child. Probably even more so. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not being quiet. You can hear us. Okay. Or you can hear me. I don't know about Jarl. Oh yeah, I, yeah. The way they're talking, I'm assuming T. Gray, Armel, Ardreth, uh, Graybeard, maybe not be listening as much. He might be catching his breath as he's wheezing. I'll uh, I'll make my way back there. 
And how long does this fire stay up, Armel? Oh, I'll extinguish it at this point. I think it's uh, a, a minute. Well, because you won't have any light. There's no light back here. Yeah, light your torch before <laughs> you do that. I'll yeah, leave it up if it's a torch. No, I've got I've got produced flame as a cantrip. I will. Uh, I'll just. Okay, I'm gonna leave the light with okay. you then, and then that way it just is there. But we'll say you're using a cantrip then to to light right, your right, area. Right. Okay. Yeah, I can I can do gotcha. that. I'll make a flame appear in my hand and just walk around with it. I'll just think, I'll extinguish the uh, flaming sphere because it's actually probably pretty dangerous. Seems like it. Yeah. Okay. I think I got the mic issue fixed. Yeah, we can hear you. Cool. Uh, it's because I went Yay. old school and logged into my cell phone. <laughs> nice. Did you you just said something to me, right, Jarl? You said quench. Uh, yeah, yep. you can quench your bloodlust after we we get answers. <laughs> oh man, how do I play this? How long have we been hanging out? We we had one mission before this, right? So we've yeah, known each other yeah. for a little uh, bit. The way you guys have gone just barely a week. Uh, oh no, you guys have known each other and went on adventures before. And then it's been a week since you've started this adventure. So I would say you probably know each other for at least a month or maybe two. Hmm. Uh, we leveled I, up. I, Ta da! <laughs> I look at, we're, we're hearing a I lot from at, you, Brian. Speaker test in the background, trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Sorry. All right. I, uh, can Armel say something? Go ahead. This uh, this goblin is not uh, not responsible for the murder of your village. Can't hold a, a single individual responsible for the acts of his people. If we did, we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't have Jarl here. I whip my head and I look over at you. Same exact, just like rage in my eyes, and I say, "You say that to the two dead humans back there." You tell me this is an innocent goblin. There's no such thing. Are we speaking and in Elven? Over, speak in Elven? I look over at... Am, am I speaking in Elven? Yes. No, I'm speaking in Common. Well, then I will respond in Elven. It's not that you can't do it now, but we need to question him. That, that's I, an Elven, though. I'm hoping the goblin and, can and, and I nod over to Armel, uh, just kind of a acknowledging uh, that he's basically saying the same thing I am and uh, I reply in Elvin uh, that um, this is what I'm trying to explain <laughs> oh man what's my charisma 7 uh, what's my other thing what's my other set hold on um Charisma seven elf. I don't. Is that even possible? <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. Uh, he, he's a, he's he's a wood elf. <laughs> he's got a he's covered mass, a twig. Massive RBF. <laughs> Let's see. My client, important thing in my life. Great responsibility. Happy friends all the time. Um. Hold on. I'm gonna roll a D two. What is it? A D two? Yeah. For like what flipping a coin. That? Yeah. So one, I do it. Two, I don't do it. <laughs> Fuck. That would have been so fun. Uh, I look up past our mill and I'm like, Human! Are you okay? Have these goblins done anything to you? And I drag myself to the human behind the armel. Yeah, and uh, you can tell now it's a, a female. Um, and she's in tattered clothes. And... Uh, she kind of turns to you, and, and it definitely has shock, and uh, the fear is slowly dissipating, but not. You're still in a, in a dark cave with with just a little bit of light, um, and she kind of sees, addresses you. She doesn't really know, but since she's addressing her directly, she kind of she gets up and she just kind of falls into your arms and hugs you. That's just such a great visual. Because uh, so <laughs> I'm so angry right now. Poignant. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my response as she falls in, uh, into me is just like, my hands are out to my sides. I have like a dagger in my, <laughs> in my right hand and she just like collapses into me. 
and like probably dragging me down too. And yeah, just, she's yeah, I, she's probably a little heavier than you are. Yep. I'm looking at her and I'm just like, with the face of just like flabbergasted. I'm just flabbergasted. And I'm just like, what the fuck? And I just like very awkwardly pat her with my left hand on the back, with my like <laughs> my dagger still in my right, just raised. I'm just yeah. So and she's definitely surprised. in shock. Um, and she's kind of murmuring a little bit, just kind of quietly. But all of you still hear it because there's not all of a sudden the caves have gone pretty quiet except for the dripping of the water. You're not hearing battle anywhere else. You're not hearing anything else. Um, and you hear her murmuring, uh, they were going to eat me. They were going to eat me. And you kind of look back. She's kind of staring at that body that you guys kind of passed, the human body that's still back in the cave. And that's what was happening to that body is that body was being eaten and she was next. And she's just staring at that over your shoulder um, and just kind of murmuring those words, they were going to eat me. I, uh, I, um, <clears throat> because she is dragging my, me down, I, I, like, I wrap my hand around her, her waist and I, like, pick her up a little bit just to, just to yeah, take yeah, the weight off of me a little bit. And, uh, I turn over her head and I look straight at Jarl. And, uh, I just stay there, attempting to comfort this human. Can I roll a check? to see if I know whether or not that's something goblins normally do with humans? There were also, uh, no, you uh, don't even need rats. to check. They they do that. They do do that. They will eat. Yep, they will eat other species. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Yeah. And there were a bunch of rats here too, remember? No, it was a week and ago. In fact, the ogres would too. Everything in this cave so far that you've met would eat well, I was assuming the Other ogres stuff. and the rats would. I wasn't sure about the goblins. I was trying to make a point, <laughs> which I can't make now. Yeah, Charl. <laughs> that's, a, that's the look I'm giving you. That's all being conveyed in this look. All right, and, and uh, yeah, she kind of looks at you and, and she says, uh, who are you? 